Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme. And I can tell you we've got a stellar cast for you in the studio today. Alan Ruff, Alison McConnell and Murdo McLeod, just to add a little bit of bite to the midfield. So we've got lots to look forward to and we've got lots to talk about, including, of course, Scotland. Yeah, Scotland on our minds after the win against Cyprus. Is confidence building? Certainly hope so. We'll get the thoughts of Murdo, Alisson and, of course, uh, Ruffy ahead of this match tonight against Kazakhstan. Um, first and foremost, let's uh, find out about the build-up to that game from our reporter, Gabriel Antoniazzi. Tonight is the final Euro 2020 qualifier for Scotland. They play Kazakhstan in their last game of 2019 as well. Now, Steve Clark is looking to make it three wins in a row for the first time as Scotland manager. And if he can avoid defeat, then Scotland will finish third in their group, which in the end may matter little. But a thing that may matter is getting revenge for some of the Scottish players. Of course, the opening Euro 2020 qualifier was a 3-0 humiliation in Astana that ultimately spelled the end for previous incumbent Alex McLeish. However, Clark himself says he is not too focused on exacting revenge over the Kazakhs, he just wants to win the game. For me, football is never about revenge. It's all about the game coming up. Uh, what happened before happened before. We we want to finish the the campaign on a positive for ourselves. We want to finish third in the in the section, which is the best we can do now, and, and that's what we'll be focusing on. Now, as I said, the result itself may not matter too little as long as Scotland avoid defeat. But it is the last game before March's Euro 2020 playoffs here at Hampden. The semi-finalists. The opponents are not known yet, we'll find out on Friday after the draw, but it is the last chance for players to impress Clark and give themselves a real opportunity in starting what is Scotland's biggest game in 15 years. So make sure you tune in, kick off from Hampden Park, 7.45. Well, let's hope uh, things hot up at Hamden. It'll certainly help uh, Gabriel's nose, uh, Ruffy, because he looked uh, gay cold out there, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly did, but uh, he, he's braved the weather. Uh, good luck to him. Yeah, absolutely. Short and sweet from Ruffy mm -hmm. there. And, of course, uh, you'll be delighted to see Ali here with us before she heads off to the Foo Fighters concert. They're going to be playing somewhere, which is why she's 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 getting more attuned to the programme now, Ruffy. She just feels more and more casual, Murdo. It's as simple as that. From our start with the long dresses on at the beginning, and now all of a sudden <laughs> a, a pair of denims and a, a jacket, a but jumper. Yeah, she's uh, she's really just settled into this role 100%. And I dare I say it, um, has it changed your attitude towards Scotland, Ali? Are we in a situation where we should be confident going into Kazakhstan? I don't think Scotland are anywhere near yet being confident going into games. I think uh, there's always a, a sense of trepidation. I think Kazakhstan was the first opening game in the in the group, the 3-0 defeat that, that got us off to a really poor start. I don't think Scotland can afford to take any of these games lightly. I think, crucially, what you're looking for here is a tiny bit of momentum, just something to build on from the weekend and, and to look forward to March. But I think it, it's a difficult ask tonight. I don't think uh, the, a, a win would be straightforward, uh, if I'm being honest. I think a draw might be the best that Scotland come out with. I, I just don't. I, I don't think it's an easy evening at all, and I think it's not helped by the fact that there's a real apathy around the game, given the <coughs> where Scotland are in the group and the fact that Hamden will be quiet. I think it'll be, it'll be empty. I think there'll be vast spaces, empty spaces around the stadium. I don't think the atmosphere will be particularly good, and I don't think that helps the team either. Yeah, you know, having listened to you there, Ali, you've put me on a complete <laughs> downer about Scotland again. I was, I was just getting lifted <coughs> from the weekend, Murdo. <laughs> <laughs> give give me even a modicum of know, hope right. about this because you've you've played for your country. Is there anything we can? I, I mean, I, Ali thinks draw. I don't know. I, I don't know what uh, gives me a sense that we might be able to nick something. I think because 
in the old school, you, you're kind of looking at Kazakhstan, you're thinking, oh, we've got to beat Kazakhstan, we're at Hamden. And I think, and it's this game, and then the qualifiers come in next. So all of a sudden, you're looking at it, you've got to turn up tonight. The boys have got to turn up. I know it's, it's difficult for them. They've got to turn up, get a result tonight, two results back to back, and that'll give us a wee bit of momentum going into the, the qualifiers. And well, I think it's so important they've got to play tonight. Well, here's the question, uh, Ruffy, as you see the... I mean, this is just a possible lineup. He mm -hmm. could change anything because he's obviously going to try and look at people. Does he stick with certain elements of tried and trusted? I mean, De Gallagher could be in there for, Mc mm -hmm. you know, for Devlin and stick with McKenna, Taylor, Palmer. You know, I'm looking at the middle of the park. Does he throw Kenny McLean in there? Will he stick with Naismith up front? He's got to stick with Christie, surely, because he scored a cracker at the weekend. Yeah, that, that's my major problem and it's no fault of the manager. Uh, I thought in this game we might maybe see nine or ten players in a team that he wants to be there. You know, I don't think we're anywhere near that. I think uh, in the weekend there, I thought maybe six or seven would be starters. Yeah. Uh, but don't have a striker. He obviously doesn't know who his two best centre-halves are. Obviously the full-backs will come back in. For me, the only positive just now is uh, is McGinn, McGregor, you know, Christie, you know, yeah. definites, you know, they they are the the engine in the team just now. I really do. I really do hope for the players and the manager we get a win tonight. I, I think supporters being supporters grab on. Yeah. We we were not hysterical at the weekend because we beat Cyprus two one. And in, in all reality, it should have been two each, you know. But we're grabbing a hold. We're grabbing a hold of anything now and going. This is it. This is the way forward. But I don't think we're anywhere near it yet. I think the big thing as well, Peter, a lot of people will be thinking, use his home <coughs> squad. I don't think so. I think he should be using the players that he wants to be. It's like a, your first team. Yeah. Every manager wants to have the best 11 starting every Saturday and have them fit and play all the time. For the, your national team as well, it's the same. You want the best players to be involved and you want your best players to play well tonight. And if we can do that, just what Alan's saying, you've got seven or eight players there, they'll be starting in the qualifiers and we've got three or four spaces for someone, the players that's going to just impress them over the next few months. Yeah, I, I'm with you on it, Murdo. I, I think, you know, the, the one thing about... I mean, I, I can even remember as being critical of Craig Brown's Scotland side. Then it was Andy Roxburgh before that, you know, and then, you, mm. you know, you're going back and you're saying to yourself, you could pick nine or ten of them. Yeah. The others had to try and force their way in. Craig Brown had it like a club side. So you yeah. knew ten or eleven of them were, you know, ten were stonewall certainties, Ali. And then, as Murdo's just mentioned there, someone forced their way into the reckoning. I only think we've got a potential of seven because I still think, as, Mur as Ruffy said, the, the central defence is still up for grabs. I mean, ain't got a striker. The rest of it, I'm, you know, I'm starting to look and say, Palmer, OK, I can, you know, that's, that's good. Robertson's going to come back in. Tierney's going to... For me, Tierney will play left of centre mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when he comes back. Mm -hmm. Robertson will play left back. Yep. And, I, and I suggest that because having discussed it with Steve Clark, that's what he feels as if is going to happen, unless someone tells him, you know, unless someone forces his hand. I think ultimately what you need <clears> are your best players. I don't think you can afford to leave good players out, players who are playing at the, the very, very top level. I think it's what Scotland are crying out for. Players who are exposed to that standard of football every week. I think you have to find a way to accommodate both of them, whether that's playing Tierney as a left centre back and, yeah. and Robertson as a as a left back, or whether he'll, he'll not play him at front. right back because Tierney has already racist. said to him, yeah. "Don't play me left. Don't, don't play yeah. me right back, Gaffer, because it will kill me." It's, 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 it's always a, a difficult one, though. See, see the likes of Tierney, who's played left back but ran the full left yeah. side. Yeah, that's his. That's what he. That's, he thinks that's his job. Yeah. But all of a sudden then, he's in the middle of the park. It's more difficult, much more difficult for him to actually know where his run's going to be because yeah. he'll be thinking, oh, I've got to get further back, but he doesn't need to get further back. What then do we all do, though, Mordo? What do we do? It's, it's really difficult. I think it's a difficult choice. No, that Tierney at some point maybe could go in and play left centre back or something like that. Yeah, he's definitely... He's, I mean, he's, he's done it before. He's definitely going to play... Le if, if everybody's fit... He'll play him left centre back. Yeah. I mean, that's what that I had. I had a so chat with him, you, and he said yeah. that's the option because the boy doesn't want to play right back. Yeah, he can play right back. Peter, are you, then, are you talking about three at the back? No. Three at the back. No. Four at the back. Four with at the back. With Robertson back is left centre. And and Tierney in. Mm -hmm. Tierney, Tierney in. in. So left, left, left back is left back is Robertson. Left centre is Tierney. 
A and other is the other centre half, and then there's a right back. Right back, yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know about you, and I'm not. I don't want to be portrayed as this Scott McKenna basher, but mm -hmm. Murdo Scott McKenna has been elevated to a point which I think is way above his station. Yeah. You know, you've you've got to achieve something in all the games, and that's has not happened up to now. So he's got to show the manager if he's playing tonight. Got to show the manager that he's going to be one of the centre backs. No, and they've all got to fight for it. Yeah, and it doesn't matter who what club they're playing with, whether it's down down the leagues or in the championship in England. If they're good enough for the manager to put them into the team, they've got to show that at the national level. Because yeah. we, we, we can't go year in, year out and still not qualifying for anything. Now we've got an opportunity coming up <clears throat> in March and if we can achieve something and if we're ready for that games at the time, Peter, that would be fantastic for Scottish football if we can uh, uh, qualify. If it's a choice between Scott McKenna at centre-half or Kieran Tierney, I'm picking Kieran Tierney all day long, Ali. Me too. Me too. No, and to be I mean, fair, I'm going to disagree with both no, of you. Uh, you. You won't get away with that against Norway and Serbia. Kieran uh, Tierney playing centre half with the quality of players that they've got. He's not a defender. R Ruffy, he's not a defender. Ruffy, he's we have a boy. A we defender. have a boy at Aberdeen are saying, are suggesting he's a five or seven million pound player. In no. fact, Aberdeen are suggesting he's more than that. Uh, uh, for me, he's making mistakes and he's getting caught mm. out. Yeah. And, and I think Kieran Scott Tierney I, has not proved to anybody he can play in a, in a defensive situation. Well, give me He's a better attacking give, give, I know, absolutely. But the, what we're trying to do is we're trying to put a square peg in a round hole yeah. because the two of them are that good that you got can't. To, you've you've got, got to play them. them. I think yeah. Surely you've got, got to play a, a player who plays that position. I can position. understand that argument with you, Ruffy, but yeah. I just think, you know, we're looking at Kazakhstan tonight, we're thinking. OK, uh, we've got to be better than what we were against them uh, the yeah, last time. We yeah, lost 3-0, yeah. they were all over the place. And again, we lost goals. And if you look at Scotland losing goals, it's set pieces or right down the middle of the defence. The two guys at the centre-half position are the well, problem. Well, it was the same at the weekend. Cyprus a ball into That's the box, and wasn't it? But Even the for me, Kieran Tierney's not, not a, yeah. a, a centre-half who's so going to go and win headers. But I, 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 Modern-day football players... It's not all about being six foot mm -hmm. four and going winning. Because how many times you see the guys at six foot four, six foot five, and mm. they're in the wrong positions? So it doesn't make make them a better centre half if, if yeah, they're, that, they're not think, getting the ball. Yeah, think, so someone like Tierney, who's a wee bit smaller than the other guys, he's he's strong, he's quick, and I think that's the most important thing. You've got to be quick to play against international players because you know, mm -hmm. Alan. The, the speed is a lot quicker at international level than is at club level. Uh, all I'm saying is I would rather a centre-half establish himself oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, rather than taking the best out of Tierney. Yeah, Ruffy, I would rather we would... Uh, if we've got one, uh, uh, somebody tell me where he is because we ain't got one at the mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Um, I think he's got a way to go. I'm not saying Scott McKenna will not be a better centre-half mm -hmm. in the future. He will be, but he's still suspect. And I think that's that's you know that's evident when you look at him. And at the weekend against Cyprus, there were two or three times when I thought to myself, "You can talk him up all you want. There are there are gaps here which he's got to go through a learning curve." Um, okay, let's fingers crossed um, that we can get something from it. Just out of curiosity, Ali thinks at best a draw. Murdo, are you going edging towards maybe a win? I'm looking at uh, two nothing. Yeah, I'm two nothing as well. I think we're good enough. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go one nothing because. <laughs> Never, I've got, no, apart, no striker. From the, apart from the weekend, we've got, we've got no strikers, and you're looking, you're saying, so who's going to score the goals? Um, if Christie comes up with another peach, maybe a John McGinn yeah. getting further forward, great. Um, here's hoping. Um, just before we switch our attention to Hibs, we'll hear more from uh, the new Hibs boss, Ross Jack, and Graham Matthew, the director of football, on the way ahead uh, at the Hibbies. Um, let's find out who has won the. Uh, top, the Celtic away top, signed by Kevin Bridges. We'll hear more from Jack Ross. I don't know if I said <laughs> Ross Jack. He said I did. You never know. Uh, somebody will. Somebody in the in the digital it's, age. The great thing is, Ruffy, you can go back and forward and play it, and then eventually it'll be used in rap music. But never the, <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, Rossi, Jack, 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 Jack Ross, Ross, Ross Jack. Who uh, listen? Who cares? Apart from the heavies, they just want a winning manager. Um, have they got one? Well, uh, some people are questioning his record at Sunderland. Uh, Jack Ross himself uh, believes he's a better manager for the experience? Well, I think you um, 
I think through any managerial experience, you hope you'll come out on the other side of it and feel as if you've improved. And, and certainly for me, you know, left Scotland what, 18 months ago now and feel as if I'm returning a better manager. I'm not being overly biased towards him. I like Jack. I've got a lot of time for him. I think, you know, I, 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 Sunderland, Poison Chalice, and yeah. I don't think his record was as bad as some people are making out. Well, I think you look at back <coughs> the way how he, he managed to get St Mirren into the top flight, playing good football, well organised. And Sunderland's a club, it's so many top managers have already been there and it's, they've been dropping down all the time and it's, it was a difficult job for him. But I think as soon as I heard that Higginbottom was away, that I said right away that he would get the job. Yeah. Because I just felt he's looking for a job, he's well organised, well respected. And I think that's, that takes an awful lot in modern day football. If you're well respected, the players will play for you. Yeah, and Leanne Dempster pointed out yesterday, <laughs> Ali, uh, his win ratio was good at Sunderland. Did he, did he get them up? the expectation to get them up out of League 2 into League 1 again and try and get them all the way back to to the Premiership? Well, the answer to that is no. Yeah, he, he, such a fine line, isn't it? I think if, if you win that playoff and, and you go up to the top flight, then, then he's safe for, for another season, another two seasons perhaps. But uh, I think he's referenced himself what he had to work with when he first went in and, and the magnitude of the job that he had to do. I don't think... He, I think he, he was maybe overwhelmed at first going in and, and realising just how much he had to do. Uh, I think he had a good budget. I think they, they were sixth when he left. Yeah. Uh, results haven't been particularly good in the aftermath of, of his sacking. Uh, and I think his stock remains relatively high in, in Scottish football circles. I think he's a good fit for Hibs. I think he'll see it as a challenge to, to go back in and it's almost like a a chance for redemption after what happened at Sunderland to yeah. go in and, and revitalise the club and, and the way that they are just now it actually wouldn't take much to galvanise it and to try and get them away from where they are at the minute. Yeah, well, a sporting director um, <coughs> or director of football, call it what you will, this title, he just has to back the manager and Graham Matthew uh, has a message for the Hibs fans. I think um, the, the club's put out a, a lot of uh, media this week about backing Jack, and that's what we want. Um, we want the supporters to turn out because, actually, in, in Jack's experience, the Easter Road's a difficult place to come as an opposition manager. We want that to be the case. We want this to be a, a really challenging place for opposition players and staff to come. Do you feel confident, Ruffy, with your old side and Jack yeah, in Jack yeah, in charge? Yeah, I think so, but I think you're right. You know, the first thing they have to do is to get the fans back on board. Uh, we Lenny had them. He had them eating out his hand. That stadium was practically full at nearly every home game. Uh, that's really important. But you, to, you need to give a style of football that the fans will, will buy into. And I think the fans will buy into the new manager because I think he says all the right things. OK, uh, one last point before we uh, finish today's programme. Uh, Murdo, it's a, it's a great title race. So you've been involved in a few neck-and-neck -neck title races with Rangers uh, in your time when you were a Celtic player. Kenny Miller has played for both as well. He mentioned yep. the fact that uh, he doesn't think the winner of the League Cup will determine the outcome of the title race. What's your take on it? Well, I don't know if you can turn around and say whoever wins the cup is going to win, win the league, but I think it's, it gives you a massive boost. And I think that's something you've got to look at, if, if, especially if, if you're Rangers. And that would be a massive boost for Rangers. If, if they win a cup, they'll be thinking, oh, now it's step on and let's see if they can go and uh, win the league. But for Celtic, all the players want to keep continue to win trophy after trophy. So they'll be desperate to, to win that. And if they do win it, it's have another massive lift for all the Celtic players. So I think it, it is very important because sometimes if even a game, Peter, it's just three points. Sometimes you can think, oh, we'll get them the next time. Yeah. You can never get a cup back. The amount of players that's played in cup finals and not won it and never played in another cup final, so you, you want to win every cup. So with that in mind, you have clearly watched the way this title's going. We've been crying out for a title race forever and a day. Uh -huh. We've got one. Mm. Um, if anything, you know, cups coming up, the big game, uh, how do you see that going based on the squads and the way you've watched them? Looking at the squads just now, Celtic's got a, a massive squad, but I, I think Lenny's been doing the right thing. He's been picking just about the same team week in, week out. And I think that's the way it should be at every football club. Get your best of living on the pitch all the time. And Lenny's squad's great backup players, top quality backup players. And when Celtic play, there's not a team in Scotland can beat them. OK, 
There you are. Last word uh, on that. Uh, thanks to uh, Ruffy, Allison, and of course Murdo McLeod. Uh, great to see Murdo with us as ever. Always looks as if he's ready to go out for a meal, uh, whereas Ruffy and Ali just look as if they're ready for Woodstock to come back. Um, <laughs> on, I'm going to hand it. Stop making excuses. Uh, anyway, great to have Ali <laughs> and Ruffy with us as well. You can you can give us your comments not on what they are wearing, but uh, actually on the football. Uh, right across all our social media channels, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook Live as well, uh, and also on our YouTube channel. And don't forget, if you get a chance, we're on episode two of our podcast, uh, which we launched last week. Ruffy, Tam Cowan and myself, and our special guest uh, on Friday will be Murdo. He'll be reflecting on his career uh, at World Cups. It's great to have someone who can actually talk World Cups with Ruffy. And uh, also his football career, Scotland and in Germany as well. There's more than a few laughs for you on our new podcast spread the word on that uh, and don't forget uh, you can join us on the YouTube channel hopefully you will subscribe from Ruffy from Alison and of course uh, from Murdo McLeod and myself Peter Martin thanks for watching expect the best used car deals guaranteed visit arnoldclark.com